Assessments of the human tragedy in Afghanistan after the botched U.S. withdrawal will be coming in for some time. We already know a lot about billions in wasted U.S. tax money from the inspector general who's been the chief watchdog on all the spending. Today, under the category of lessons we should have learned, we hear from a senior oil advisor from the Iraq war. He says too often successful, low-cost projects haven't been copied. Gary Vogler is author of Iraq and the Politics of Oil. U.S. taxpayers have spent billions upon billions of dollars in the last couple of decades, both in Iraq and Afghanistan, on oil-related projects and economic projects there. My criticism, you had a show here about Afghanistan, about a $50 million headquarters that a Marine general didn't want. It was huge, 64,000 approximately square feet. Nicknamed 64K because of its size, Congress intended it to be headquarters for the 2010 U.S. military surge of 30,000 troops to fight Taliban Islamic extremists. There was just one problem. The Marine commander, the general in the ground running the surge, said, I don't want it, I don't need it, don't build it. And two other generals above him said the same thing. Don't build it. We don't need it. We already have a headquarters. It's a waste of money. And I saw something very similar to that in Iraq, where uh, there was a hospital that was constructed uh, out in the middle of some place, and, and no one used the hospital. But Vogler says there are examples of relatively inexpensive projects in Iraq that should have served as a model for U.S.-Afghan efforts. First, the Baiji refinery. What time period was that, and what did that involve? Yeah, in early 2007, um, the, uh, the Baiji refinery was, uh, was in bad shape. It supplied, when it was operational, roughly 60% of the country's gasoline and diesel. ISIS was, had a strong foothold in the refinery. They controlled what was going on inside the refinery, even though the refinery manager reported to the uh, oil minister in Baghdad he had a family. ISIS threatened his family if, they, if he didn't do what they wanted. Was ISIS around in 2007? Well, it was al-Qaeda, but it was the early elements of ISIS. You know, they put on a different, uh, uh, different name tag uh, went in 2014. But it was truly the early elements of ISIS. Vogler says the U.S. helped expel al-Qaeda from the project and installed capable technical experts. In less than one year, the refinery went from about 20 percent of capacity to 90 percent of capacity. They were producing more gasoline, more diesel than the, than the North could use. Their production was, was skyrocketing by the end of uh, 2007, early 2008. They were doing things inside the refinery that they had, had not done in years. How much did a project like that cost? Do you have well, an that's estimate? What the, the only incremental cost to the U.S. taxpayer was was the one technical guy that we sent up there. So for over two or three years, it was less than a million dollars. But that was by far the, the, uh, the best project, one of the best projects that we, uh, we undertook. Vogler says another low-cost success story was the Iraq Crude Oil Export Expansion Project to replace and expand a rusting pipeline handling most of Iraq's oil exports. Until we got our project in, we were very concerned because we thought that the, uh, the pipes would start failing and that uh, the, uh, the government would, of Iraq would not have any, have any income and so the U.S. taxpayer would have to somehow subsidize uh, the government until we could get this uh, project going. But fortunately, it turned out well. And how much did it cost the U.S. taxpayer? It cost the U.S. taxpayer $2 million. But with that $2 million, we, we were able to convince the Iraqis to spend $2 billion of their money, of their oil money, and today it's delivering probably 10, 20, 30 billion dollars a year to them and will for years to come. So it, I like to say we spent two million to get them to spend two billion that will probably get them 200, more than 200 billion dollars in revenue. As for why those kinds of projects aren't the norm, Vogler says he thinks success came to be measured by how fast the U.S. government could show that it spent enormous sums of money rather than by the end result.